Hi everyone, so I'm gonna show you how it is that I prep for my week uh, regarding uh, preparing a chicken dishes throughout the week. What I do is I, is I get either a, a, a big batch of like thin sliced uh, boneless skinless chicken breasts or uh, chicken thighs or like breast tenderloins. It just depends what's on sale at the time. And I go ahead and prepare it and uh, then I go ahead and, and put it in my refrigerator and then throughout the week I'm just getting you know f four ounces or however however many ounces I need at the time uh, and we usually finish it out through the week it doesn't really I'm some, most of the time I can make maybe two servings it just depends on the size of the packet that I get and if my son's eating also the same thing or if he wants to eat something else so um, it just depends on how many and I'm gonna go ahead and show you just how I prepare it just for the base and um, and then I'll show you later on recipes that I cook along with it um, so for the first thing that I get this one is a chicken breast tenderloin that I got from Walmart and um, it's already de-thawed and ready to go and here are the nutritional facts and I'd, like I said as soon as they come home I go ahead and freeze them because I've always got a batch ready to go uh, that's already cooked in my fridge I've also purchased uh, from HEB these are the uh, thin, uh, the young chicken thin sliced boneless skinless breasts. Now I got so mad because one thing HEB does that I don't like at all is that when they sell their meat products, they don't put the nutritional facts like anywhere. And I've actually asked them, if you look around, there's nothing. They just tell you safe handling instructions. Let me see. I've asked them, the, uh, the butchers there, I'm like, why do you guys not put any nutritional facts on your uh, products? And they're like, oh, because we make it here. And I'm like, that does not make sense. But anyways, so I always try to avoid them and I don't buy them, but this was on sale and I, I'm just going to guesstimate on the higher end. So I'm just going to say, you know, four ounces is four points just because I just don't know and I hate that, but it was on sale and I couldn't pass up the deal. So you can also get that, and um, it's usually around maybe three, four points. I don't know. I'm just going to guess a minute and say four. I also like to get this one, and this is from County Post, and these are the boneless, skinless chicken thighs. The, definitely the most tasty of all of the, um, either the, ten the tenderloins or the breast, of course, because they've got more, um, I guess, juiciness. And you can see they have their nutritional values here, and it tells you about... Um, it's about three points for four ounces. So that's not bad and a, a lot comes in this huge. So this lasts me like for the whole weekend. This is my son and we, both of us, you know, it takes us a while to get through them. So whatever is left over, we freeze it. So um, that one's good to go as well. So you see, you can get any kind of products, any kind of uh, the, 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 the boneless skinless breast or the chicken thighs or the breast tenderloins and you can cook them in this manner. And let me go ahead and start. I'm going to go ahead and open my package of the ones that are already de -thawed. And we're, all you do is just, just take it out. Now, I'm not one of those people that will wash the chicken. My mom still is on that. And I tell her, Mom, do not wash the chicken. <laughs> but she's like, you, you're not going to change her. So she washes her chicken. I don't. And the very first thing that we want to do is we want to put some cooking spray. And any cooking spray will do. It doesn't matter which one I use the um, the Crisco the Crisco butter one just for flavor but anyone will do I mean just when you're done cooking it when you're done cooking your chicken you're just gonna taste uh, the chicken let me see and all the spices because we're gonna put a bunch of spices and you know who needs butter right <laughs> I don't know, for some reason, you know, it's been so weird because before, especially watching, because I love to watch the cooking channels, I love to watch, uh, any anytime you would, I would see a dish and they would put butter, I'd go, yum, oh my God, it's going to taste so good. And now it's like whenever I see a dish that they put butter, it just really grosses me out. And I keep thinking, oh God, can you imagine all of the exercise I have to do to just, you know, undo all of that one stick of butter? I'm like, ugh. So now I get really grossed out. <laughs> it's weird how things have changed, don't you think? Anyways, but that's how it is now. It's like, ugh, don't even want to think about it. All right, so we've arranged them all together in our pan, and that's coming out nicely. And let me go ahead and wash my hands. 
Okay, so we've arranged our chicken, and then the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and put um, the first round of spices. And the first thing that I do is I add a one um, bold and spicy sauce, steak sauce, and we're going to go ahead and put it in there. And it's not too much, just a little, like maybe like a tablespoon or so. It's just to give it a little bit of flavor. And then we'll just go ahead and use one of these um, brushes and then we'll just make sure that it, everything gets evenly coated. So it wasn't a whole lot. It was just for it to get a little flavor because when you're cooking, especially like I like to make to uh, tostadas and I like to make... Um, and I like to make other kind of uh, tacos and all sorts of things. All A lot of flavors and more spices will get injected later on when we're cooking our recipe. So this is just like a little, a little bit. We don't want to overpower it, but we just want to give it a little bit of flavor. In case one of those days you just come home and you're just so tired, you just want to eat something really quick and you do not want to prepare anything. And it's, it's good to go already as it is. You know what I mean? You don't have to really, you know, go into it and put a bunch of flavors so that, but we don't want to overpower it either. So there it is. We've already put it on. And then I'm going to put on some turmeric. I think that's how you pronounce it. And this one we can, we're going to put a whole bunch. Not too much, but maybe somebody might think, oh my God, that's too much. But to me, it's just a little. <laughs> and then we're going to put a little bit of the um, seasonal just to coat it, evenly coat it. You know, I'm sorry I don't do measurements, but I just kind of sprinkle it on there. A little and then the last and the best I guess the power star of the spices is this uh, Weber or Weber I don't know how you pronounce this roasted garlic and herb I'm thinking it's Weber roasted garlic and herb seasoning now this is so good it is just amazing and we're just gonna go ahead and put it in there this one we're, oh my god the smell is so intense and just oh my god I just want to eat it I love this um, spice. Okay, so now we evenly coated it and it's all ready to go. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and put some foil paper and see how easy that was. I think the hardest thing was, uh, you know, just getting our hands a little bit dirty. And I guess to avoid that, you can use tongs, but I'm just so used to just doing it and washing my hands. And so you cover it with full paper and then you're going to put it in your oven and I'm going to put it let me see I have a little convection oven and I'm going to bake it at about 450 degrees and this these are let me see these are not very th thick at all like if I was making the chicken thighs if I was making the chicken thighs then I would cook it for like maybe 40 minutes um 45 minutes something like that, because that's a lot of meat it's very thick so I would cook it like maybe 45 minutes but these are kind of thin so I'm going to go ahead and say maybe uh, 30 minutes at 450 and I'll we'll, let's check back at that time okay see you in a bit also it's been 30 minutes and I've got my little um oven mitt on the counter because I saw something on the internet that you're not supposed to put that those um glass dishes whatever on a cold counter because it'll like break it and shatter into a thousand pieces so thanks internet for uh giving me something else to be scared of so i've got it all ready so that you know nothing will it's never happened to me but oh my god i don't want it to ever so we've got it all set up on there and i put it on and let's check our chicken to see if it's fully cooked oh my god you got your house is going to smell just so delicious. I just love, love, love the way that the spice is, uh, spices that I put on there are so aromatic and it's just so amazing. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a knife and a fork so we can cut it open. Okay, so let's see if we can zoom into it a little bit. And let's see if we can cut into it and see... Um, if they're done or not and what you want to do is you want to make sure that there's no pink in there and see it's all perfectly white yep it's all perfectly white but just let's just check all of them I always do that to all of them because I just want to make sure that there's nothing that is raw 
that's the last thing you need. So most of the time, um, this is going to go into another recipe where you're going to have to like recook the, the, the chicken. So it's gonna get a, a, you know, like a second round of cooking. But uh, still, I just, I don't like to leave anything that's raw. And I hate the lighting in my kitchen, especially during the early morning, which is right now it's early morning. And you can barely, it's like, gives off like a yellowish light. But ugh. It makes it so hard. I have to like film in the dead of night so that, you know, it'll the light will shine as bright instead of it being all yellowish. I don't know why. But everything looks really cooked. And like I said, these were really thin pieces. So that's why they cook so fast. If like I said, if you had done the, the chicken thighs or like the like a bigger chicken breast, a much thicker one, it would have taken you longer. But these look really cooked. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let them rest here for about, you know, 10 minutes. Let them cool down. And then once I'm, uh, they're cooled down, I'm going to go ahead and put them in a, um, I'm going to seal them up. So nothing gets in them like you know wandering bug or fly or whatever so just make sure that they're they are covered and uh, once they're cooled down after 10 minutes I'm gonna put them in a glass container and then store it in my refrigerator and they hold up to about a week um, in my refrigerator like they can last but uh, they are usually gone between by either you know in two or two days or so because um, when me and my son get into them you know they're usually gone but uh, let me show you the containers that I got at, at Ross and I got some uh, one of them at Target which was on sale and I think that's still on sale so um, let me show them to you real quick. Let's carefully move our chicken out of the way. We don't want it to shatter on us over here. There we go. So it's out of the way. And let me show you this container I got it. This is a Pyrex. It's a Pyrex container. And I got this one. It's a, what size is this? This is an 11 cup container. Well, let me zoom out. Sorry, we were zoomed in. Oops. There we are. Okay, so I got this. This is a Pyrex container. It is 11 cups. And I got this. It's really big. And I got this at Target. And they were on sale, I think, for five, five something each. So this is a really good price for them because usually they're uh, not that cheap. They're kind of expensive. Okay. And this one, I got this one at Ross of all places. This one is an anchor. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. It's an anchor. So cute. And uh, this one is how many? Six cups. It is six cups. And there were two of them, two of them for $10. So each one was $5. So um, I bought a whole bunch of them thinking I'm going to prep and I'm going to go all crazy. And, and the reality was that I like my food to be fresh. I really don't... Um, like if the only time that I eat frozen foods are like lean cuisines and things like that, but I heat them up as well. So I'm, I'm just, I still haven't gotten to that, um, to that level yet where you see that the videos where people already have the whole entire prepared meal and it's in there because I just like it fresh and I have time to cook. Maybe like, you know, later on, um, if something happens, if, you know, um, and I'm very crunched for time. Maybe I will go that route. But for now, I think the only thing that I'm prepping is the chicken. And um, so what I'm going to do is um, I get my chicken once it's cooled. And I put it in one of these containers and it gets stored in the refrigerator, like I said. And then um, during the week, I just keep getting out serving sizes. I get serving sizes out and prepare the meal. So that's all I have for you today. And in a little bit later, I'll be showing you videos on how it is that I that I prepare meals using uh, my prepared chicken as the base. So we'll go ahead and see you next time. Bye, have a good one. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, so our chicken has cooled down and we're ready to store it away in our glass container. But I wanted to show you real quick, this is another container that I got at, um, at Ross of all places. And it would seem so weird that you wouldn't you know associate um, glassware or cookingware at Ross but they do have a really good section and it's always very uh, discounted prices so make sure you check it out uh, so anyways this one was a Pyrex storage and this was also six and a half cups 
but I love the shape of it, the way and a lot of um, the way that it's contoured. It just fits so much. You wouldn't think that it would make a difference, but it does. And I, that this is my favorite one, but it's you know, and right now it's, it needs to be a wash, so that one's going to uh, be used for later. So I'm going to use the one that I showed you earlier, the uh, anchor one, and this one is six cups. And we're just going to be storing our chicken away, our cooked chicken. And like I said, um, you can eat it like this. Say you have a busy night and you just want to come home and you just do not feel like prepping anything. You would not feel like, you know, cooking anything or putting anything together. This is already done. And so then you just go ahead and uh, prepare it and just heat it up. You know, and it's all ready for you. It's already seasoned. It's everything. But if you want to make something else, like for example, today I'm going to make, uh, later on today I'm going to make some chicken tostadas. And I'm going to go ahead and, um, you know, put some, uh, prepare this uh, with, I'm going to shred it. And then I'm going to make, uh, put it together with some um, onions and some tomatoes. And all that I'm gonna do is just take out and measure four ounces of it, and that way, if that's enough, if not, I can get more. If I have enough points that day, then I, I can you know, get eight ounces, get two servings of it. So it just depends how many uh, points you wanna um, spend and how many you have. And it's so neat, and it's all ready for you. And this is what I love about food prepping. And there we go, and it all fits in there, all nice and snug. And then we're just gonna put it in our fridge and we're gonna wait until we're ready to use it. And there you go. And that's all you have to do for your meal preps. And so it's all ready and then we just seal it. And like I said, you just put it in your fridge and it's ready for you. So if say you want to come home and you just wanna you know, cook it, and just grab it like that and eat it you know with a piece of bread and that's it that's dinner because i'm just so tired i do not feel like cooking right now then that's what it is or if not you want to make something you know um like i said tostadas you want to make tacos or you want to make another dish with it or you know make some a spiralizer uh squash with it or whatever you want to combine with it at least your chicken's already done and that cuts your cooking time in half so this is great to do like on a, uh, maybe uh, on a Sunday or some day that you have um, a lot of time um, that you have to spare. You can do this. You can prep your meals and then uh, you can leave, leave one batch in the, you can leave one batch in the fridge and put the other batches in the freezer. And that way, you know, you, you, you're done this ahead of time. So that way you don't have to always be, you know, cooking everything from scratch because that's m mostly what a lot of people uh, complain to me about. They're like, they're like, I just don't have the time to cook fresh every day. It's just so, um, it's so time consuming and I'm tired. I just want to come home. I just want to eat. And so then this is a great solution to have it all ready and prepared. So um, I'll see you back later uh, when we're making our chicken tostadas. Bye. Hey everyone, so we're back and we have our chicken. Um, this is chicken that was previously frozen. I went ahead and took it out of the food saver bag. So I still have some more pieces in there. And I went ahead and I broke it up and I measured out at eight ounces, which is what I'm trying to make today. And this is 8.1. Still has a little bit of ice, you know, from, from it being frozen. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be eight ounces once that uh, thaws out. And so this is what I'm gonna go ahead and use. And eight ounces comes out to six points uh, of this particular type of chicken. And I'll post uh, a picture of it so you see which one I'm talking about. I think these are, these are actually the chicken thighs, boneless skinless chicken thighs. I think the brand is called County Post. And uh, eight ounces of them comes out to six points so this is what i'm going to be using and i'm going to go ahead and deep thaw it right now and that's the only thing that you have to measure and then these are the the tostada that i get from heb of course heb let's see if i can get it up a little there we go so this is from heb and um, i'm going to go ahead and get four of them and these are the nutritional facts back here somewhere maybe no here they are <laughs> so here they have the nutritional facts and uh, four of them come out to five points so I'm gonna go ahead and open them it's not even difficult but I think the most time-consuming part of this recipe 
is um, actually cutting up your onions and your tomatoes. Everything else is really pretty simple. You want to make sure that you get four whole uh, tostadas. You don't want to get the pieces that are broken up. So we're just going to get four whole ones. And here we go. Two, three, and four. So these four tostadas, and they're kind of big, all of these are going to cost you five points. So now we're going to go ahead and cut up um, a tomato and an onion. And we're going to throw it together in our, with our guacamole packet. So this is the um, the guacamole that I buy. It's called the Tableside Chunky Guacamole from Good Foods. And I buy this at Costco. And that's the only place that I've ever seen it sold here in my area. And what I like the most about it, it's very delicious. It's very good. And you can see here it is. And see how it has is very chunky and it's really good and all of this entire uh, chunky guacamole is only two points which is why I love it so that's what's gonna take time um, mostly in this recipe is just cutting up our veggies and let me go ahead and start doing that okay see you in a bit pretty cut up a medium tomato up in here and I'm getting an onion and just make sure that you get a small onion you don't want to get too big um, because then you're going to have leftovers and it just doesn't taste good after you leave it over. So just make sure you open it and peel it. I, I always take off the first layer just in case there's anything, you know, whatever is going on with it. And I just always peel off. the. You're left with a li little piece. That's all we need. We don't need too much. And then we just go ahead and we cut it. And what I like to do is I just cut it in half. And I always see them in the cooking shows, how they cut all these, you know, different ways and methods. And I'm like, oh, I can never do it. I try so hard and I just cannot get it together like the way they do it. So, so I am so sorry if I do not cut it perfectly the way that they do, but I try my best. So now that we have this, we just go ahead and we mix it. And then we're gonna go get and put our guacamole in it, our chunky, chunky guacamole. If I can just get the packet open and see how, how chunky it is. It is so delicious. And what it does is it just tastes like, a, you know, a avocado with, um, with lemon, that's what it tastes like. When you put a lot of, of uh, lemon juice in with avocado, that that's exactly what it tastes like. And so we just go ahead and put it together. And this is gonna be our topping to our um, tostadas. And this is the reason why I was telling you don't put too much, don't don't put too much of tomato or too much of, um, of the onion because then you know you're not gonna have enough to coat. Um, there's not going to be enough guacamole to coat. So here you go, and it gives you that flavor. How do they do when they go? Ch -ch 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 -ch? <laughs> oh my god, I'm like, that's the skill that I wish I could learn. Like, oh my god, I'm here going super slow. Forget it. And they just go, Ch -ch 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 -ch. forget it. I don't know how do they, they do that. I'll probably end up with like stitches and broken off fingers and just forget it. I'm such a klutz when it comes to knives. How are you guys? Do you cut yourselves? I always cut myself. I think that's why I uh, always get like those fake nails because they protect my fingers. I always chop off the nails and you know that's the only thing that keeps my fingers safe because when I don't have like right now that I don't have those fake nails I'm like oh god please don't cut. Please don't cut my fingers. Okay, so we've already cut it down, and I'm going to go ahead and put this into our mix. And I'm going to add a little bit of this, um, the seasonal. I'm just going to add a little bit of it. And this is the, uh, actually, where are you? This is the 25% less sodium one. That's the one I use, and it just it tastes exactly the same. And we're just going to mix it together. Now you can add um, 
lemon juice if you want to, but honestly, the uh, guacamole already has it. So I don't really add it because it already has that amazing, great flavor. And so that's it. And so our chicken is thawing out in the microwave. And let's see if it's ready. Okay, you all, so here is our eight ounces of our chicken. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it. It's already, it's a little bit hot. Ow. It's a little bit hot. It just came out of the microwave because we know we, we um, I thawed it out. And then I heated it up again just to make sure that everything's good. And it smells so delicious. And um, to make our filling for our tostada, we're not gonna use the entire eight ounces. So whatever's left over, what I do is I make this huge salad. So whatever's left over from not, from not fitting on top of our tostadas, I go ahead and combine it with, um, I combine it with what's left of here, of my, um, my guacamole, and I add a bunch of lettuce to it. And so it makes like this really big salad. And um, it is so delicious and it's so filling. Um, I I'm, can barely touch this chicken. I think I'm gonna leave it to cool off a little because it's kind of hot. And uh, you can shred it with your fingers. And I just like to cut it like this because I'm just not, it's too hot right now to handle. Ah! <laughs> and so um, it's, you see, you can still see the spices from when we cooked it, the garlic. And it smells wonderful, y'all. Oh, I just can't wait for y'all to try that um, That's the garlic spice and see how you all like it. I love garlic. I love to season my um, my chicken with garlic. I don't know if you guys like it or not. I, I really love it. I love my spices to overpower me. Um, like I said, my taste buds have changed since I uh, joined Weight Watchers. I've been sitting over and over again, two years I've been with them. And um, in the beginning, I hardly used any kind of spices. I really didn't need anything. And now it's like um, I use an overload of spices. So I apologize for using a lot of you say, oh my God, that's way too much. And I don't use measurements because I just kind of just hit it on there. So if you want, make sure that you try out, uh, start out little, don't uh, with a little uh, bit. You don't want to overpower yourself. Just go ahead and start out small and then gradually add as more and more as you, if you like it. Um, and that's how um, I really suggest you doing it because you don't want to just start off by throwing the whole bottle in there and then you're like, oh, I don't, I, I hate it. And then you're going to ruin your entire chicken. So just start out using a little, see on, on a little piece, get a little piece of chicken and uh, try it on there. See if you like it on there. Um, but I really hope you like it. I just love it. And especially with a steak sauce also, with A1 steak sauce, you can add your favorite kind. I, my favorite kind just happens to be that bold and spicy. Uh, but you can add your favorite kind that you want to. Um, so this is kind of shredded. It's not, well, you can shred it now. It's, it's not so hot. So now I can go ahead and shred it. And that's a tr another trick that I use for my foods that I've uh, acquired uh, from Weight Watchers is that I go ahead and uh, whatever, uh, you know, if it's chicken or if it's beef or any kind of uh, food that it, that it is that I'm, I'm eating, I tend to cut it into smaller pieces or shred it or something. And it creates, it looks so much bigger. And uh, it kind of fools you into thinking that you're eating more when all you know it's still the same amount, but it just it just looks like it's so much more. And you see, remember when um, we started out with this dish, it was just you know a few pieces, and you could see a lot of the of the plate beneath it. But now that we've shredded it, it's like you can't even fit it in the in the plate. So it kind of tricks you into thinking it's more than it really is. So here it is. Our chicken is shredded and cut. There we go. And we're ready to start filling in our first tostada. Now you can also uh, add uh, some beans to it if you want to. I just keep it like this. I really don't eat uh, put too much because I'm trying not to put so much points. But if you want to, you can. If, like I said, if you have enough points during the day, you can. Or activity points. So I just put a little bit, a little bit on there. Oops. A little bit of the chicken on there because remember we're gonna leave some to make a big salad at the end and then we're just gonna put our topping on top and we don't want to put too much because remember it's gonna all fall and cave in on us if we put way too much so then I put that 
and then we're going to set this aside. We're going to set this aside. And this is my homemade salsa. Actually, my mom makes this for me. And these are serrano peppers that she cooks with tomatoes. And they are, it's, so, it's super spicy. She can't even you know, get close to it because it's so spicy. But I love it. So here's our tostada. And uh, we're going to make four of them. And uh, whatever's left over of the chicken, of the filling, we're going to combine it with our salsa. And we're gonna, I'm going to put a lot of uh, lettuce into it and um, make a really big salad. So it's going to be really filling and it's going to be super delicious. And so this is just one, one idea that you can make uh, if you prep ahead and you go ahead and make your uh, tostadas. And you see it was really easy. The thing that we took most of our time was just cutting up the uh, tomatoes and the, and the onion, which really didn't take very long. But that was all the thing that prep time that we did. And we just put it in the microwave, uh, the chicken to thaw out. And um, it is going to be super filling and super delicious. And um, have a great dinner, guys. See you later. Bye. I've already devoured my four tostadas and this was what was left of the, the salsa and this is how much was left of the chicken and so remember our trick that we're just gonna sh keep shredding it more if it was uh, in pieces we would cut it more just to make it look like it's more um, that's one of the th remember I was telling you that that's one of the tricks that I use um, just to make to fool yourself to thinking it's a lot <laughs> and trust me it does work and so we're just gonna go ahead and shred it some more to uh, to plump it up. That's it. That's all we can shred. And so all of this came out, <clears throat> and we're gonna go ahead and put it with our um, salsa left over and we're just going to go ahead and mix it and then what I did was I already washed uh, some spring leaf salad and see how it's going to oh my god it's going to be so delicious so the salsa is kind of wet so you don't really need to add um, some salad dressing see how it's all super wet and you can add more if you want to this has all been washed and what I do so I don't add any points is I just add more of my homemade salsa it's so spicy so I don't even miss I don't even miss you, you can see I don't know if you can see if I can if I can zoom into that I'm missing I don't know if you there you go see the seeds you can actually see the serrano seeds so it is so spicy. So you don't even miss the ranch dressing. So zoom back out. And so now we have this really huge salad. And it is filled with our chicken and our salsa and onions and tomatoes. And there you go. And it makes it more filling. So that way you eat eating your tostadas. And then this goes ahead and fills out the rest of the food. Okay. And there you go. We've mixed everything together. And now you, if you have extra points, you can add cheese if you want to. You can add uh, croutons if you want to. I'm going to leave it like this because it is delicious, just like this. So we've had actually two dishes in one, four tostadas and an, a really big salad. All right, guys. I want to thank you so much for joining me here. And if you've got any questions or any comments, please let me know in the comment section. And please hit the, the thumbs up icon if you really like this video. And subscribe to my channel. Uh, to see more videos like this. Thank you again so much for being here. Have a wonderful day. Bye.